What's going on guys and welcome back to F123, my team career mode for Season 1, round number 10, the Italian Grand Prix. It's our first time in Italy this season and on this game because we didn't go to Imola, but we're here at Monza for this time around for the Italian Grand Prix. Um, had a chassis upgrade fail, so we're going to redo that. That should come in a few rounds time. Maybe it might come on for Monza, I'm not 100% sure. A um, couple of other upgrades that I'm having a look at here, some durability stuff. And we're actually going to upgrade our um, durability fabrication. And that will give us spec 2 of durability, because we're only spec 1 at the moment. Also going to put these activities on here. Not a lot of activities to choose from for some reason, don't know why that is. Um, and then we are going to try and get this gearbox upgrade that's not going to come through until qatar so a bit more of a gap for that one to come through but as we look at the r d well things are getting a little crazy here we are now right behind ferrari we were just ahead of mercedes last time we've now gotten away from mercedes and are now right behind ferrari and that is very promising going into this weekend because this is monza this is a lot of straights. Now, yes, there's also a lot of very hard braking zones into the chicanes, and you do need grip around those corners, but we have the best engine on the grid. Still now, we have the best engine. We know we're quick in a straight line, so what is gonna happen here at Monza? Because we could have a pretty good race car here, but as we get into Q1, um, things are going okay. The car feels good. I mean, obviously, it's very quick in a straight run, in a straight line. Just gone for kind of a standard setup. I use all my setups based on um, a YouTuber called Sim Racing Setups. I use his setups for F123, and I've used them for F122, and I think briefly in F121 as well. We ended up P10. That was mainly because my first flying lap. Um, was quicker than my second flying lap. Um, I just went out on the same tyres again the second time around. Didn't make up any time. and ends up P13, so glad that he's into Q2 for the second time here. I expect him at the moment to be getting into at least Q2 every single session. So um, two races, uh, two qualifying sessions so far for Duan, and he's into Q2 for both of them. Uh, this lap here in Q2 wasn't the best. Um, my first sector was not amazing, red first sector. We did go purple in the second sector though, because that's where I made a lot of time up and we're almost three tenths up on my previous time. But um, yeah, the first sector definitely wasn't amazing, but definitely made it up in the second sector. And then this final sector was decent. It was a decent sector, um, ended up just going green in the end. We ended up P4 though, so that's about where I expected to be. Lando Norris though, P3 in the McLaren. Very good from him. Both Alpines into Q3 once again. Doohan ends up P12. He just misses out on Q3. Um, he's there with Piastri again. They seem to just be locked um, next to each other in qualifying like they were in Spa last time around. Alonso also the big one to not make it through to Q3. So that Aston Martin perhaps just not quite having the straight line speed. It is, I believe, one of the slower cars on the straights with the with the you know slower one of the worst for R&D on the powertrain so um yeah not great for Aston Martin as Q3 comes around here and we're going for our quick lap you can see the skies are looking a little bit dark now no rain for qualifying however it is heavy rain forecast for the race should get lighter throughout the race but it's it's going to be raining for the whole race now that's interesting. I've gone for a fully dry setup, um, even though we've got rain the whole race, and it's very low downforce because this is Monza, of course, really do uh, the lowest downforce you will ever use all season. Um, but I decided to not go for a wet setup because one, I wasn't really sure what to do with a wet setup apart from, you know, maybe putting the wings up a little bit, bit bit more higher wings um, or lower wings, whatever you know, higher wings is what you'd say. Um, Apart from doing that, we went, we've gone really well in other sessions this season, running dry setups in the wet. So I just figured, let's just give it a go. We ended up P8 in Q3, which was not as good as I was hoping. We're ahead of the two Alpines, but both Mercedes, both Ferraris, both Rebels, and Lando Norris, P3 in Q3. What a result from Norris here. Um, that is amazing for him and McLaren, but it's not great for us. P8, not as good as I was hoping, but let's see what we can do in the race. We're back in Italy once again for another round of the Formula One World Championship. 
and what a great race is in store for us today here at the oldest circuit on the calendar which hosted its first race all the way back in 1922. With the rain coming down here at the 3.6 mile Monza circuit, the low drag setups preferred by most teams could cause them some problems in today's Grand Prix. So watch out for cars struggling for grip around the curve of Michele Alboreto. That's the parabolica to you and me, the last and most demanding of this track's 11 corners. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Sainz, Russell, Hamilton, Davies, Ocon, Gasly, Fernando Alonso, Dewan, Oscar Piastri, Norris, Joe, Albon, Hulkenberg, Sargent, Stroll, Magnussen, Bottas, Sonoda and Nick de Vries. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. Also here of course is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about Davies. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. All right, so unfortunate for Norris, he qualified P3 on the grid. He's got a grid penalty, he starts P13, but it's lights out and away we go for us. P7 for us in these very wet conditions, full wet tyres here. As we have a look around the outside of Hamilton, uh, Russell is squirming all over the place up ahead of us. We're going to go early on the brakes into turn one, I'm just a little bit cautious as um, cars are all funneling through this very tight chicane first corner. Through the second corner as well, Hamilton might have just gotten us there with us having to be a little bit cautious through those first couple of corners as we continue on behind Hamilton. We're getting a really good run through this right corner though. We're having a look, but it's so difficult to make a move here at all. And we're just going to go early on the brakes again because I'm a little bit worried here with everybody just so close that if we go too late on the brakes, we're just going to smack into the back of someone or we're going to go off into the grass. So we're just going to have to stay behind Hamilton for now, see what we can do, but I get a massive amount of understeer around that next corner. Ocon is having a little look around our inside, um, around that corner just behind us in the Alpine, but we managed to hang on for now. We've lost a bit of time to Hamilton there with that understeery moment though. And I'm going to be honest, as the two Red Bulls are side by side up ahead, I'm going to be honest, the car doesn't feel great as we go really deep into that next part of the track. Um, the car is not feeling good here on the brakes and grip wise. Like I said, we've gone for a full dry setup here because I thought that would have worked out. I mean, it worked out in Monaco. It's worked in, you know, the qualifying sessions for Canada. Um, was it Britain? No, Austria was also a, a, a wet qualifying as we get a bit of a sideways moment around the final corner. But here, I guess it's just because it is so low downforce um, that we just really don't have the grip. Um, so, yeah, it's not been the best start to this race, to be honest. As we have a look at the start once again from the front of the grid, Leclerc gets a great run off pole position. But actually, Max Verstappen's under fire from his teammate, Sergio Perez, into turn one. Perez started third, Verstappen started second, but Perez is trying to get past his teammate who is higher up in the championship. Perez yet to win a race this season, but he's now gotten ahead of his teammate and up into second place. That is a good start from the Mexican. Verstappen may have a little look back at him, but can't quite do anything into the next corner. Um, we have got a battle between one of the Hasses and uh, the McLaren of, is that Oscar Piastri or Lando Norris? I'm not 100% sure. Um, as they go down into this next corner, it is Oscar Piastri um, getting, well, almost getting overtaken by the Haas of, I believe, Nico Hulkenberg. I can't remember which one uses the yellow T cam out of the two Haas drivers. Um, I'm not sure which one that is, but um, 
They go side by side, still down into turn one here. Piastri trying to defend. He's ahead of his teammate, even though his teammate qualified P3. Uh, the 10 place group penalty put him behind his teammate, and he's battling with, I think that's one of the Alfa Romeos behind. Looks like Norris has gotten past that car, but um, the Haas driver here manages to get ahead of Oscar Piastri. As now Lando Norris is going to go for a move on his teammate. It's McLaren v McLaren down into the final corner. Norris on the inside. We know he's got pace here. It is different different conditions in the wet but we know that Lando Norris is very good in wet conditions and he gets past his teammate but Lando Norris uh, Oscar Piastri sorry with the slipstream is actually going to have a look back around the outside of his teammate this is a great battle inter-team battle between the two McLaren drivers the Haas just up ahead which I believe is I believe it's Magnussen I, I actually I'm not really 100% sure I can't quite tell between the two Haas drivers um because the helmets are very similar as well, and in the rain, it's so difficult to see. As we now have Carlos Sainz trying to get past Verstappen. Verstappen seems to be really struggling here. He's now got a fairly decent gap to his teammate of Perez, who's kind of bolted away ahead of him. Leclerc still leads, but Sainz is trying to make it two Ferraris on the podium for Ferrari's home Grand Prix here, and he's got the move stuck, so that'll put the Tifosi um, up in cheers that'll make them cheer for sure as a little bit behind us i think it's actually directly behind us the two alpines are about to start a battle with each other gasly trying to look for a way past his teammate esteban ocon as gasly swaps to the left but then swaps back to the inside again as they go side by side into turn one through turn two still side by side with the two alpine drivers this team has had a little bit of a resurgence in this kind of second half of the season they were they were decent in the first half, they kind of fell away really far towards the back of the grid, um, uh, kind of towards the middle of the season, have now started to come back again. I think I've had both cars in Q3 for the last two, maybe even three qualifying sessions. As we're continuing on, and yeah, not really a whole lot of ground being made. To be honest, if anything, we're kind of staying with these guys, but it's so difficult to overtake in these positions. And actually, Max Verstappen, I don't know if he has an issue. I haven't heard anything, but he's the one leading this train and potentially slowing us all down. So that's interesting to see. As now, we have the two Mercedes trying to go for a move on Carlos Sainz. You've got Hamilton on the inside as they go into turn one. Sainz is just trying to defend for his life for a podium here um, for the Ferrari fans. It would be great to have the Ferrari uh, both Ferraris on the podium, one of them leading the race right now, but that podium has been snatched away from Sainz at the moment as Lewis Hamilton gets up into P3. A bit further behind, and this is uh, Fernando Alonso. No, this might be, I think this is, no, I think that's Lance Stroll actually battling with one of the Alfa Romeos as he goes up the inside of Zhou Guan Yu, I believe it is. Jack Doohan, my teammate, is just behind these guys as well, but uh, Zhou Guan Yu trying to get the move back done on Stroll. Doohan to the inside. It's three wide down the main straight as they head into turn one. It is Doohan, my teammate, on the inside. Stroll is the sandwich in between with uh, uh, Zhou Guan Yu on the outside. It's still three wide through that corner. Zhou Guan Yu has to back out. He's been the loser in this situation but it's now Stroll and Doohan side by side round turn three uh, looks like Doohan might have the grip here maybe to get this to stick not quite at the moment Stroll still there on the inside but Doohan breaks later he does a beautiful little move round the outside and that is a great move from our teammate Jack Doohan to get up another position as now Sainz coming back at Hamilton once again. He really wants that place on the podium for the Ferrari fans as he goes up the inside as they head into turn one. That'll give him the outside for turn two, but Hamilton is going to put up a fight here, but in the end, don't think he can quite do anything. That is Sainz back up into P3 once again there. As we, not a whole lot happening for us to be honest, we're just kind of stuck behind these guys, don't really have the pace to close in a whole lot, we're just kind of here. The two Alpines are somewhat hanging onto the back of us, um, I think they're fighting each other, and that is maybe helping us out a little bit, because they seem to have pretty decent pace here, the two Alpines. I think they're actually like 6th or 7th in the R&D, now they've gotten ahead of Haas, and I think they've gotten ahead of McLaren as well actually. So the two Alpines looking pretty strong. But they are fighting each other, and that might be costing them here in this race, as now we have Ocon trying to go round the outside of Gasly, because Gasly 
got back past his teammate, but now Ocon's trying to come back again round the outside of the final corner, and I think he's got it done, but with the slipstream, it's so powerful at this track, no DRS enabled um, at the moment in these wet conditions, but Gasly, with the slipstream, manages to pull back alongside his teammate, and they're going to go side by side into the chicane. Fernando Alonso just kind of waiting in the background there to pick up the pieces if these two guys have a coming together. It's not looking like a great race for, our, uh, for Aston Martin so far. I think Alonso is sitting P10, not where he would want to be. But um, yeah, the Alpines continue to fight as the two Mercedes will now be fighting. Um, I believe that um, Hamilton lost out to Sainz. Sainz has kind of uh, charged on up the road, a little bit more pace in that Ferrari, it seems, at the moment. Um, as, I mean, that is the case on R&D anyway. But now the two Mercedes are side by side. I think Russell trying to get past Hamilton. We are right behind these guys now, and we are quick through this corner here, but we just don't have anywhere to go. The way is blocked. The two Mercedes are absolutely blocking us up ahead here, and I do not want to smack into the back of them. So I've just got a break early here. Russell goes round the outside into the chicane. That is very good. My, um, my engineer, though, is telling me that we have damage. What's going on there? We have a strategy change, though, which is onto the intermediate immediate tires so the rain has lightened we have dried the track out a little bit i check vehicle condition he says that we're all good you know just basically talks about changing onto intermediate so i think that's maybe just a glitch where he was supposed to just tell me hey we've got a new strategy to change onto intermediates but instead he was like hey don't worry about the damage we'll sort it out in the pits um, we don't have any damage from what i can tell so that is all good as we come in for our pit stop onto intermediate tyres. I'm hoping for some better grip here because like I said, our car is very much favoured towards the dry conditions. We're still not dry yet, a lot of spray and intermediate tyres. But I'm hoping that maybe we'll be a little bit better on these compared to the wet tyres as we head into turn one. We cannot get the car stopped. We have to take to the runoff before we smack into the back of Hamilton. I try and do what we're supposed to do and go around these barriers here, but it's pretty much impossible in the game to actually go around those barriers. We just had to smash through. We then get some of the board stuck in our front left. We lose the position to Hamilton um, and we more crucially lose the position to Ocon. But then literally around the next corner, Ocon has a mechanical failure and retires from the session so we've at least made that position back up again and to be fair we were behind Hamilton anyway but um yeah that was that was insane I just came out of the pits I pretty much slammed the brakes on straight away but we just had no braking at all and now the virtual safety car is out what has happened here a bunch of cars in the pits my teammate actually one of them so he might um, he, that might help him out uh, this virtual safety car may help his position um, from pitting at the right time as we have a look at what happened here we've got Lando Norris trying to go for a move on I believe that's one of the Williams um, as there is contact and uh, th that is Logan Sargent Lando Norris has front wing damage trying to get past the Williams the VSC comes out and these two are side by side they're both coming into the pits and they're actually going to come into the pits side by side I've never seen this in the F1 game in the end I think Sargent just about creeps ahead but yeah they literally came into the pits side by side so that was interesting only uh, one one lap of VSC though, not even, and we get underway once again. The two Mercedes still battling it out here. Hamilton trying to come back at his teammate. We are kind of defending from our, um, Alonso behind, as you can see, as Hamilton on the inside there of turn two. Russell, though, trying to get the better run around the outside. That is generally where you will get the better grip, and that means Russell keeps on, holds on to that position. We're now starting to pull away from Alonso, and you know what? I'm enjoying this car, and I'm enjoying this track a lot more with the intermediate tyres. Our car seems a lot better on these tyres than we were on the wet, and we are catching up to Hamilton. We are just behind him now. I feel more confident on the brakes. Um, I feel more confident around the corners. It's still slippery, but I'm feeling a lot better than I was on the wet tyres. Alexander Albon is coming through turn one, turn two, and he spins around turn two. He just avoids hitting the wall, but that is not good for him. I don't think he was quite running in the points anyway, but um, yeah, a spin for Albon. We haven't seen a spin from the AI for a little while. Just comes through turn one, turn two, puts the power on way too much, spins into the gravel, just avoids hitting the wall. 
we have a look at that from Magnuson's view who was behind we just see yep he just spins out on his own accord and Magnuson just goes thank you very much I will take that position but then the other has of Nico Hulkenberg currently running in P10 and he's got an engine failure. What What is Hass's luck this season? They've still not scored a point. They were looking pretty good. He had a decent lead over the car behind him to score one point. Hass's first point in this race, but it's a mechanical DNF for Hulkenberg, and that is going to be, once again, no points for Hass. As now, we are really up the back of Lewis Hamilton here. We're showing much better pace on these intermediate tyres now as we come out of the uh, turn one, turn two chicane. I still have a really good run through this long right-hand corner. We're now right behind him, and we're going to go for a move to the outside going into the next chicane. We're just going to try and get on the brakes and just go round the outside and make that move stick. We are up a position. I think it's our first proper on-track overtake of this race. We've really not been moving forward, as now my teammate is also going to show me how it's done as he's going for a move on Oscar Piastri, and this is for P10. Holgenberg had that P10 position. Mechanical failure put Piastri into P10. Now Dewan, um, who made a few positions up thanks to the VSC, um, is now gotten past Piastri and is up into that final points paying position. So maybe Dewan can score his first points of this career mode, of his F1 career in his second race in Formula 1, just like Awasa did actually. He scored his first point, and only point, in Australia round two. This is of course round two for Doohan, so let's see what he can do. Um, we are actually pulling away from Hamilton here. Um, he's really struggling in these conditions. We're not really catching up to Russell though, and I think the position we're in is about as much as we can expect. But around the final corner, the winner of this race, the Tifosi will go crazy as Charles Leclerc wins the Italian Grand Prix for the Ferrari fans at their home Grand Prix. It's a great win for him, which just puts him really, really close. We'll see it in a moment to George Russell in the Drivers' Championship standings. As we cross the line, Hamilton actually had a very good final lap and caught right up to the back of us. But in the end, it's P6 for us. It's a decent result in the end, but honestly, it's not as much as I was hoping. I was hoping we were going to be really good at this track. We weren't quite as good as I was expecting, especially in the wet conditions, but it's still P6. They made great use of the clear air today and didn't allow anyone to exploit the slipstream behind them. What a great win here at Monza. Anthony Davidson. How do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, they clearly have a car that comes alive in the kind of conditions we were dealing with today. It's a very balanced package in the wet, and what that means is that the drivers have confidence to attack, and having that confidence gets you on the power earlier, it lets you brake later, and can put you a long way up the road. Here come our winners now, a thrilling race and a tremendous effort by Ferrari. Their history is well known, so it's no surprise to fans the world over to see them come out on top once again. So it's Charles Leclerc winning the Italian Grand Prix for what I believe is the second time he won here back in 2019. Um, and he wins it again in 2023 F1 Season 1. Um, and it's a Red Bull 2-3 though. Perez comes home for P2, so it's a good result for Perez after not having quite having the pace in the last few uh, races. Of course, we beat him in Spa last time around, did not have a good race then. Max Verstappen comes home for P3, so he at least finishes ahead of Russell, his main championship rival and the current championship leader. He finishes in P5, where P6 with then Hamilton, Gasly, Alonso, and Jack Dewan does bring home that P10 for his first point in Formula 1. It is a DNF for Hulkenberg and for Ocon, very unfortunate for especially Hulkenberg there. Um, although if that didn't happen, Dewan would probably not have scored his point in the championship. And now Leclerc is only five points behind Russell in the Drivers' Championship. And then Verstappen a little bit further back from that. Then Perez is in fourth. And then I think Hamilton and Sainz may switch around as well. We're still there in seventh. Dewan moves to the last of the point scorers. Um, so he is now up in P18, uh, is that I believe. So good job from Dewan there to boost his way up the championship. And then in the constructors, it is still Mercedes out in front, Ferrari second, Red Bull third. We are there in fourth, just ahead of Aston Martin, McLaren, Alpine, Williams, Alfa Romeo, Alfa Tauri, and Haas. Still the only team not to score any points, but I am sure that their day will come. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please go ahead, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys 
in the next video.